All right, well, good morning. Hope you guys are all ready for EdTech Karaoke Part 2. We're going to pass the mic. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, early in the morning on the last day of the conference. We are all very excited to see all of you for our session called the Tomorrow Toolkit and uh, Web Tools to Support Elementary Creativity and Collaboration. Uh, my name is Kyle Pace. I am an instructional technology specialist from Kansas City, Missouri. And with me I have my awesome colleagues, Michelle Baldwin. Do you want to introduce yourself, Michelle? You don't need, you don't need to clap. It's okay. All right, I'll curtsy you. Know. I'm Michelle Baldwin from Denver, Colorado. I teach at Anastasis Academy, and um, right now I'm teaching grades three, four. Hi, I'm Erin Klein. I currently teach second grade in Michigan and at an independent school, so I'm excited to share some things that we're doing today. Oops, sorry. Uh, Adam Bellow, uh, formerly a teacher. I taught, uh, it's funny, I taught high school English, but my degrees are in K-12, uh, K-6, general and special ed. Uh, currently, I run the website Edutech and Edgeclipper. And hi, thanks for coming. All right. Back to Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to dive right in. We called this session the Tomorrow Toolkit because we wanted to share with you we're each going to just round robin and share with you some of our uh, favorite or currently favorite web tools. We know there is a lot more that we could certainly share with you in an hour, uh, but we picked four of our favorite things uh, that we want to share with you guys this morning. Several of you um, have already been up here scanning the QR code. Anybody that needs to move, step up for a minute to do that, please feel free to do that. Don't hesitate to do that. Also, you'll notice once you are on the Google site for this session, right above the QR code, there is a Today's Meet link. So if you go to todaysmeet.com slash ISTE2013 Tomorrow Toolkit, that will take you to our Today's Meet room. So we wanted to create a back channel area for everyone to join in on to uh, post questions and comments and interact with each other and that link will be live as well long after today so you are welcome to yeah <laughs> that makes the QR code a little hard to scan um, but you're welcome to use that today's meet link as well uh, after today to ask questions and have some conversations so we wanted to create an area just for you all uh, to do that so this session is also being streamed live on the web to those attending the conference virtually so those of you that are watching from afar, thank you so much as well. You're welcome to join in um, on the Today's Meet link as well. So we're going to jump right in. I'm going to start off right off the bat, and then I will pass it along to my esteemed colleagues. So what I wanted to share with you guys this morning was related. Uh, I'm also a Google certified teacher, so I wanted to share with you guys one of my favorite things about Google Docs, and that pertains to creating digital media kits inside of Google Docs. And by the way, just so you know, uh, to go back on the, if you go to the Lesson Ideas tab, that's where you're going to find all the resources that we're going to be sharing with you guys today. Um, so I'm going to be talking about digital kits with Google Docs, because we know when we have kids creating media-rich projects, we want them to uh, practice that good digital citizenship. We want them to practice good digital ethics and finding uh, copyright free creative commons uh, images for those media projects can be difficult sometimes. We don't want to just send them uh, searching aimlessly out there on the web to look for images. Uh, so inside of Google Docs, and I'm going to come back, I'm going to step back here so I can demo just a little, do a little live demo. Um, if you guys didn't know, Google Docs has built into it a really nice, and I think, I apologize, you're going to have to watch me log in because I forgot to do that. You guys all have the same password as me, just a bunch of dots, right? Yeah, yeah. So when you are working on a document or a presentation, for example, I'm going to pull up a document in Google Docs. 
a lot of people don't know about the image options that are built in right there within Google Docs. This is one of my favorite features. So when your students go to insert and they choose image inside of Google Docs, they can do a few different, they have a few different options. It defaults to having their students upload a picture they already have saved somewhere on their computer. So a flash drive or somewhere on physically on that particular computer. Um, in this case, you also, if your device, if the computer has a webcam, that's what that take a snapshot option is also. So kids could almost, you know, they're, they're pretty good at manipulating that computer if they need to want to take a picture of something right there, what they're looking at. Um, but down here, what I want to point out is this option down here at the bottom called search. Uh, when you click on search, you get a few different options over there. You can do a Google image search right here from within your document, and that will only search images and only bring back images that are free to reuse. Okay, it's going to bring back copyright free, Creative Commons licensed images if you do a Google search. Or I can click on Life, as in Life Magazine. If I click on that option, Google partnered with Life Magazine, uh, I think it's been a few years now, where they have put thousands upon thousands, actually I think it may be half a million or a million, uh, historical images from Life Magazine that you can search through. So lots of great historical images if you choose that option. Or if you click on Stock Images, Google has provided lots of uh, just ready-to-use photographs. Those are all photograph-type images that you can search through. So for example, um, if one of you guys wants to just click for me real quick, you, if you click on Stock Images, for example, and then if you just type something, I don't know, we could type School Bus, for example. And when you type what you want, and then it's going to bring back all of those different images that you have to pick from. When you click on one of those images, when you click on one of those images, and then it will, you click select, and then you've got that image inserted into your document. So there is a, it's a great way to get, and it's probably going to come in enormous, uh, but that's okay. But it's a great way to get copyright-free, Creative Commons-free images. If you're already, how many of you are already a Google Apps for Education district? Okay, that's what I thought a lot. So something definitely to ha keep in mind, an important conversation to have with your students. Um, but also, I put other, a lot of other resources on our Google site as well, different websites you can go to beyond what's built into Google Docs, great places like Pick for Learning, for, exa Picks for Learning, for example, where you can go and get uh, copyright-free Creative Commons images for students to use in their media projects. All right, passing the, I'm passing the baton now. <laughs> don't, Adam, don't clap for me. Yeah, right there. Hi, I teach second grade, like I said earlier, and I wanted to share two um, sites apps that we use in our classroom a lot, and they are Skitch and Write About This. The first one I'm going to talk to you guys about is Write About This. This is one of my favorite apps. Um, it's a new one, so if you haven't heard of it, it's great. They do have a free version and also a paid version in iTunes. The reason I especially like this app is because it was developed by a teacher um, from Michigan. And he contacted me about two summers ago and he said, hey, I know that you did a lot with the writing project. And I was thinking about um, creating an app to deal with writing. And I want it to be prompt driven. What do you think about that? And my first instinct was, you know, Brad, I don't know. Um, my students don't really write to prompts a lot. Can you tell me a little bit more about this? So as he started explaining it, I realized that it was much more robust than just simply responding to a prompt. And what this does is you can take a picture. Children can take a picture of their own um, image. If they're out at recess and see a butterfly, they can snap a picture of that small moment, come back into the classroom, and write about it. Um, or they can go into the gallery, and then there's a tremendous amount of um, visual images available for them to use. So I like that you have the option. Children can get inspired by images that are provided, or they can select something of their own. 
And um, I want to share a video with you, if we could scroll down a little bit. And I think um, when you hear the students talk about the app, that's where the real power comes from. So I can sit here and tell you how wonderful it is all day long, but when you actually hear the student voice behind it, I think that you'll see the power of it. So it's just a short video, about two minutes long, but I think that you'll enjoy it. I'm Jasmine. I'm seven years old and I'm in first grade. This is my writing on write about this. The title is anything and I'll write about anything. My name is Audrey. My name is Audrey. Uh, when you when you take a picture, you just push use and you can write about it. We like this app and we can change different things so we can go into search and we can search things. By working on doing writing and finding something that you really know a lot about and then writing about it. My name is Jenna Dixon and I teach first grade at Wayne City Elementary School. And we love using the app Write About This. We've kind of used it as a writer's notebook where they can go in and read a prompt and write that way or they can just look at a picture that inspires them and write what they start to think about. We went into here and looked up pictures and we saved it to the to write about this. We just had a um, special person's lunch and the kids got to take pictures with whoever came in and so now they're putting those pictures into write about this and writing about their families and I think that that's special to be able to share that. Sometimes it's hard to think about what you want to write about but when you're going to write about this it gives you ideas if you can't think of any. You don't really like writing and you're not good at it or going to write about this and I think the iPad is a lot easier than paper pencil. I'm Michael, I'm a fourth grade student, and write about this is awesome. So it really is easy for the kids to use. So I wanted to talk just about the, the user-friendly aspect of it for a moment. Um, if you kind of scroll down, you can see it's really, there's not a lot on the screen to view, and it's very intuitive. So the kids kind of know, just even in kindergarten, my, my son Jacob, who's five, he, you know, touch and click until you get it right. So he kind of explores with it, and uh, my daughter Riley, who's nine, she helps out with him. And they've created some really, really great features with this. And just on a side note to let you guys know really quickly, um, I was talking with Brad the other day, and I said, you know, I really want my son, who's five, to be able to tell um, his stories, and he can't yet, you know, compose complete sentences, etc. Is there a way to annotate so that he can orally tell his story? So, for those of you that are the younger grades, um, they are going to work on maybe they're going to call it tell about this instead of write about this, or they'll embed it directly into this app. So, that's coming too. Um, and then, if we kind of scroll down, one of the other great features is you can print off the children's writing, and it comes out in a really beautiful PDF in color that you can you know, display or put inside the student's uh, writing portfolio. And what I plan to do with this next year, I didn't get a chance to do it this year, um, but when the kids create their pieces and then we work through the writing process and they do their revisions, to be able to print this off and put it in their portfolio so that it can travel with them. And um, that way you can kind of see in the same format how their writing grows throughout the grade levels. So I'm excited to try that. And Another way that you can do it, this is actually, if we kind of scroll down, you'll see uh, if you do centers or daily five or any sort of um, small group instruction, this would be a great activity to have the kids just use right about this. Um, I've used it with some of my kids even during transition times or whenever we get back from lunch and there's, you know, ten minutes. They can just kind of get inspired by an app. I'll just throw my iPad under my document camera, find an image real quick, and say, let's just, we've got five minutes here. Let's just do a free write. So instead of just letting those five minutes go to waste um, or doing some other activity, we really like using Write About This for that. So like I said, I'll just open the app, find an image really quickly, or a special person of the day will get to find an image, and uh, we'll just do a quick free write. And But when you put it in the centers, this is a, a printable document. I, I believe it's linked. If not, I'll definitely get that done this afternoon. But, um, and you can download that, and I like it. Uh, a lady in Canada made that, and she put it on her website just for free. So you can just 
laminate this, put it in the center of the station, and it tells the kids exactly what to do, how to launch the app, the process, so in case they forget you're working with a small group. Um, if we scroll down some more, you can see kind of what the home screen looks like whenever you get into the app, and then the icon for whenever you're in the app store. Next thing I want to talk about is Sketch. And instead of putting it um, on the site, I couldn't tell it better than one of my friends, Matt Gomez, and he happens to be in here. So he uses Sketch a lot. So if we can go um, open up a new tab, and then the way I find it, this is easy for me, um, I always just Google Matt Gomez, and then, so if you guys wanted to do that, this is an easy way to find it. You can just Google Matt Gomez and Sketch, and he's got a lot of blog posts. You want to raise your hand, Matt? He, um, his kindergartners use this, and his kindergartners do amazing work with Skitch, and that's how I actually found out about it. And I love that when the little guys use it, then I know my second graders can use it. And then it's easy to get inspired by what the fourth and fifth graders can use it for as well. So you can see just the visual appeal of what Skitch has to offer. What you do, it's an Evernote product, but you don't have to have an Evernote account to use it. It is a free app in the App Store. So what the children can do, you can either, just like the Write About This app, you can take your own image picture and then use that to put labels and add to or you can go um, and use the gallery to get an image and pull from the web as well, from the internet. So if you kind of scroll down, you can see some of the ways that his kindergartners have used it. There's a few pictures on the bottom. And you can also kind of blur faces. I know whenever I share something um, with my students, you can kind of remove the child's faces. There's a lot of things that you can do with it. Um, Sketch is a pretty, it's, it's pretty easy. Um, there's a lot of creative things. My kids have, have done things with this that I, I would have never been able to create within my lesson. So I think sometimes when, I, when you just put the app in the kids' hands and say, hey, why don't you try this out? What can you do with it? And that's what we do um, in our digital workstations in my classroom. We have kind of free exploration at the end of the day. It's organized play, pretty much, but the kids are exposed to a lot of different technologies, and um, they tie it back to the lessons that we've been teaching and working on that day or throughout the week. So they get to go and become photographers, and they get to create their own media projects, and then they get to tell about it and share it. And it's really been empowering for them as digital writers and finding these images. So there's a lot you can do with it. Matt has many more posts. Um, just Google Matt Gomez and Sketch, and you can kind of see the work that his kinders are doing, which is pretty great. So if you have any questions about Write About This or even any recommendations, please feel free to let me know because I know the, the teacher behind it um, who's in Michigan is always looking to, to make it better, too. And um, so whatever you guys want, I'm sure he'll take that into consideration. Um, any questions, we'll stick around afterwards, too, if you want to kind of play around with the app. Um, I'm definitely here to help and show you that. I'm going to pass it over now to Michelle. Thank you, guys. OK. Um, I'm going to talk to you about Skype in the classroom. Um, I guess I need to hold this because it's not going to work very well. Um, I'm all about making connections with kids and especially relationship connections so that their learning has meaning. So it's rather difficult when you're in a classroom and you don't have access to a lot of trips. At our school, we're very lucky. We go on probably a um, one or two learning excursions every month, but I know that most schools don't get to do that. Um, so how to bring people into your classroom and basically break down those classroom walls. Video conferencing is a great tool. I know that you've heard of Skype and Google Hangout and FaceTime, um, but there are a lot of different ways that you can use that. At the very beginning of my experimentation with Skyping, it was all about just saying hi, right? It's like, oh, it's so cool. You can talk to somebody in a different city or state or country. And that enough is a wow factor for kids, and they're talking and they're sharing back and forth. Um, I put up some resources here at the top of this particular lesson ideas uh, page so that you have some how-tos. There are some times when it's like, well, I kind of know how to use Skype or I kind of know how to use Google Hangouts, but I'm not 100% sure how to get started. So there are some really good resources there for you. Um, Skype's education site, by the way, is really building. A, a few years ago, it was, it was difficult to find anything specific to education. Now it's just blown up all over the place. So it's really wonderful to have that education.skype.com resource. Um, and then I also left three easy steps to creating a Skype and then how innovative teachers are using Skype in their rooms. So I thought today I'd share with you just a couple of the, uh, the different mini lessons that I've had um, using for my kids. And the first one, we, were, um, we, we follow blocks with um, international baccalaureate themes. 
And our first, our second block was about who we are and how the identity that we see in ourselves shapes who we are, how we interact with other people in a community and society. Um, I learned very quickly as we started talking about cultural traditions and our heritage that um, every student in my class was like maybe a sixth or seventh generation American citizen. And when we talked about their traditions, including um, interviewing their family, they didn't have a lot of their cultural traditions. I know that's not the case in a lot of other schools, but it was really kind of an eye-opener to me thinking, um, you know, at my, my family, we have Danish wedding cake at every wedding. That's a tradition from our heritage. The majority of our kids said, yeah, we watch a movie on Christmas. That's our tradition. And I, I was kind of saddened by the fact that they don't really have any of those same really um, uh, rich traditions from their ancestry. So I got out on Twitter and I started asking if some of my friends I said, who um, is maybe a first or second generation American or Canadian and would you like to connect with my class? And I got quite a few responses back. So, um, and one was my friend, uh, Dr. Alec Kuros in Canada, and then Melissa Techman, who I think is over in Virginia. Yes. And then Jason Markey, who's a, a principal in Chicago, he has two students who actually came to America when they were really little. So all three of these people, including the two students, um, were able to Skype with my class and share things about their traditions as first or second generation, or their children will be first or second generation. So um, will you just click on my blog there? So my kids were able to um, have a quick conversation with them. They got to ask a lot of questions. Um, and just scroll down this a little bit. And um, Alec and Melissa shared some pictures from their families. And um, Carolina and Miro were my kids' favorite. I mean, they, they loved listening to the adults, but the fact that they got to talk with other students, and they were high school students, so my kids were really excited, because <laughs> those are the big kids, right? But it, it brought something to that classroom that I could not have given them if they'd read a book, or if we'd gone online, or if we'd researched someone else, because they were hearing it firsthand from a person. Um, and so we, th my class uh, uh, group blogged this, but then they each had their own private blog, and all they could talk about was how, you know, Dr. Alec um, breaks Easter eggs because he's Greek. And he, they loved talking about that and they were going to go home and try that. Or the fact that Melissa Techman um, is, has Irish ancestry, but she was born in Kenya. And then what did that do for her traditions and how those two cultures um, mixed were such an amazing um, opportunity for her. And then Carolina and Miro, because they, um, one's from um, Poland and the other, I think, is from... Croatia, and they were able to talk to my kids in different languages, and they would explain they were teaching them different words. This brought that entire project that my kids ended up doing into a completely different level because they had heard someone else speak. I can't um, emphasize enough of that fact that that back and forth, listening to someone and then having a conversation with them. The kids didn't feel like they were being lectured to, like you are right now. Uh, <laughs> but they, they felt, and now they, they call these people their friends. It's not, oh yeah, Dr. Alec is this guy in Canada. He's our friend. And Carolina and Miro, they're our friends. Um, and when I read their blog posts, I was just so um, emotional about it because this was an impact lesson for them. Uh, we are a very different school, and we have a lot of opportunities, but this particular example just blew their minds, and I was really excited for that. Um, if we go back to the, the Google site. Another um, uh, project that we had was we were talking about inventors and change makers. And again, if you don't have access in your community to someone who's invented anything or made a, ch a difference in something, Skype is a great way to bring them in. Um, we actually had um, access to the inventor of acoustic, which is an acoustic speaker, uses no electricity for iPads, iPods, um, iPhones, um, and they're very artistically made. So we planned to Skype with them, but it actually turned out that we were able to go visit them on site. But I know the, the inventor's name is James Simon. He actually will Skype with a lot of different classrooms, and he'll go through the whole process of how he invented, well, how he came up with the invention idea in the first place, and then now um, his business, how it's kind of just gone crazy, and he can't even keep up with all of the um, the products that he is has on order. So they are able to sit there and talk with someone and and listen about that whole process about 
why did you do this and why do you think you're making a change in the world? I feel like sometimes our children get this notion, and I think it's because we as the adults do this to them, that they don't have anything significant to offer the world until they're out of school. And we're really working hard to change that. So when we brought in inventors and talked with them online, we were able to say, hey, you can, you can do this too. So immediately my kids go out and say, okay, what is that thing I need at home the most? So how can I invent something? And at first they're like, so I can get rich and famous. And I said, well, Mr. Simon's not rich and famous, but how can you change the world? Think how empowering that is. And all it takes is one Skype call with one person to inspire them that way. Um, Mystery Skype, anybody ever heard of Mystery Skype? It's so much fun. Um, there are lots of different ways to do Mystery Skype. Um, sometimes you can do it like a 20 questions format. Other times you can give your audience clues. So um, one example is my friend uh, Steve Gagnon in um, New Hampshire or is it Connecticut? New Hampshire. Thank you. <laughs> um, we had a Mystery Skype and we gave clues to his classroom. They didn't know where we were from and my kids didn't know where, where Steve was from. So we talked about Here's something, and you get very general clues to begin with, and towards the end, like the last one is, you know, the Broncos play in our home city, and they're like, oh, you're in Denver. But if, if you get that far, um, the kids are kind of excited that they're guessing, they're, they're kind of learning geography. My kids had um, Google Maps up as they were Skyping with Steve's class so that they're able to see, okay, well, he said he's, he's east of the Mississippi, so I know it means this. And my kids, um, because of the schools that they were previously in, have absolutely no geography skills. And it scared me that they didn't even know for a while which side was east and which side was west. So these are great ways to kind of have kids get involved in making decisions and choices about geography without saying, without me delivering that content to them. Um, Pernell Rip is a fourth grade teacher um, in Mich Michigan or Wisconsin? I'm sorry, thank you, it's Wisconsin. Um, and she um, is very big into Mystery Skype. She has a lot of blog posts on that, and I, so I've linked her there. Um, there's a video that you can watch at some point. I won't take the time to have you do that now, um, but that talks about her very first example. I've never seen my kids get so excited about maps. They are, well, and Google Earth or whatever it happens to be. When we're able to do Mystery Skype with another country, they are out of their minds excited. And again, it's really helping them realize not, not just where something is on a map, but what are the people like? How does that contribute to our knowledge of our world? How do we, how do we interact with other people um, in different cultures? And again, it's that whole excitement factor. They are enthusiastic to learn. And my favorite question, like we don't have homework at our school, so my favorite question my kids ask me after these projects is, is it okay if I go home and do a project on that, on that city we just did? They're like, you guys go home and do whatever you want. They're, in, they're investigating, they're going to do their own learning because they're excited about it. Um, the last one I'll talk about today is the you know you're from blank when. Um, I was lucky enough to travel to Edmonton, Canada earlier in, um, in the spring. <laughs> yay Edmonton, yay Canada. So um, <laughs> we, I didn't know it, but I walked into a fourth grade classroom just to observe and as I walked in, there were all these little kids sitting with their hands folded on the tables, and they were grinning from ear to ear. I thought, oh dear, now what's happening? They were planning a mystery Skype game, but it's called You Know You're From Blank When, with another school that they were Skyping with in Manitoba, and my friend George Kuros and I were the game contestants. So um, George had been in Australia for a lot, uh, like maybe three weeks at the time, and had just come back, and I was American who didn't know anything about Canada, so one class asked me a questions about Canada, and the other class asked uh, uh, George about questions about Australia. Each of those classes were doing a, their own study and learning on those particular areas. What they were able to do was ask us questions, give us points, but then after we answered the questions correctly or incorrectly, then um, they would share what they had learned. Each child had a role. There were timekeepers, there were speakers, there were people who were delivering information, there were children um, back channeling as we were talking about it. Every single kid in both classrooms blogged about the experience afterwards and we were able to follow and, and add comments as well. Without that video piece, that could have taken weeks to accomplish, even through email. Um, and for, it, was, it was great because the, the most exciting part was every time we'd get an answer correct on our side, um, George and all the little kids would start raising the roof. And every single blog post said, it was really funny when Mr. C raised the roof. 
Again, is that a huge learning issue? No, but those kids made a connection with us, and now we're still having conversations through Twitter and through their blogs that have continued that learning because they saw our faces, they know who we are, they heard our voices, um, and it was a fun time. So I, I, I've left a couple um, resources for how to get started on a few of these other issues. What I love the most about using the video is that the kids are the ones really running it. I don't do that. My job isn't to make sure everything is set up. I just provide the opportunities and then the kids run the show. And that's, again, it's gone beyond just simple engagement and cool factor of using technology to um, children are taking ownership of their own learning. They're meeting new friends and now how that's contributed to their learning, it, I can't even describe to you the difference between that and just reading out of a textbook. So um, again, as Aaron said, we'll be glad to, to ask or to answer other questions that you may have about this. I know that Skype is not a new thing, but um, when you start thinking about how to use it a little bit differently and with your kids, it can be a really meaningful activity. Thanks. Hey, um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about a site called UJAM, and UJAM is a site about creating music. And you might say, I'm not a music teacher, but I think, you know, we all know the value of creativity in the classroom, and um, as I learn to use something other than a Mac, you know, bear with me for one moment, um, we, UJAM, I mean, it really is a great, <laughs> sorry, man. Uh, so UJAM is a great tool for students to create music. And creating music, you know, traditionally has been very difficult. You had tools like Audacity, which were great and they were free, but they're a little confusing. And then you have tools like GarageBand, which are awesome, but they're all tied down to only Mac platforms, right? So UJAM is a great platform. They have, um, as I log in, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll chit-chat while I log in. Um, there's a lot of, of really good features here. They've actually expanded very recently to do things like make you video and, and there's other things that allow you to, to do video editing, but there are great services already out there for that. So um, with, with UJAM, it really is about creating music. And I think you know, we can see value in, in creating music for our class projects. One of the biggest uh, issues that I find is that when I was teaching, a lot of the times students either would steal music, right? They would just say, oh, I'm gonna take this song from, you know, like, uh, Whatever, whatever's popular. Miley Cyrus, for instance, and uh, I'm going to throw that in there. Steve, there you go. So, um, <laughs> so you, you would take whatever's popular and you throw it in, and then claim it's yours. But then YouTube would block it because it's like, well, you know, that's not your music. You can't use it. And and then you know, GarageBand has a lot of great riffs, but after a while, it's like if you all have the same 15-second music piece on your project, it's kind of annoying from the teacher's perspective too. It's like, okay, this is really yeah. So this is a great way to make music. And it's very full functioning. So I, I logged in over here. I'm going to click on this tab over here that says Create. And you'll notice there's Jamagram, there's Remixing. I'll talk about those real fast. Jamagram, you can actually mix up a little music and send it to somebody. Not as necessarily, not maybe what we're going to focus on. It could be useful in the classroom, sure. Remixing is great because it's a library of music that other people have created. You can click on it and just, as it says, remix it for yourself. But I'm going to show you how easy it is to create over here. So I'm going to launch the UJAM Studio. And it takes a few seconds to load. And as it's loading up over here, it's going to come up with this screen. There we go. And it gives you choices. You can upload an audio file. So here's the cool part. If you have a version of a song that the kids want to uh, use as a bass, that's fine because they're going to be remixing it. Uh, they could also look at a song template over here, and those are really great. There's tons of them. But I, I really like to focus on creation because I want to show you how easy it is for students to make music that's valid for their own projects, but also great for assignments. So it's not necessarily just about an add-on to an assignment. It could be the assignment itself. When I was a kid growing up, I think I might have heard the song We Didn't Start the Fire about 50,000 times. Uh, do you guys remember when that was like on the radio like ad nauseum? Um, it's a great, and, and people talk about it all the time. They're like, oh, well, in my history class, I give them an assignment to take a song that they love and make lyrics that are, that's great. Well, I was an English teacher, and it was really great to take, you know, a, a, write a song about what's happening in this scene in The Great Gatsby. Or write a song about Holden Cole, I'm depressed, I don't, you know, like, and they would do things like that. So I'm going to click over here to record vocals or instrument. And yes, at Tech Karaoke was last night, so please don't make fun. I don't have my backup here. I have allowed access to my microphone. You can see the, it's modulating as, uh, my, as I speak loud. There you go. So you get that point. And uh, do we have any requests? I'm, I'll give you some choices before we get crazy over here. Um, we're, we're, I have little kids, so we could do Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. We could do the Superman theme. We could do Star Wars theme. Any, uh, any of those good Star Wars? All right, all right. All right, all right. Now, don't make fun, though. That's the, that's the only thing, okay? Um, so I'm going to click on the record button over here, and let's, let's do this. 
Okay, I'll be here all night. Tip your waitresses. Thank you very much. So I've cooked that stuff. Yeah, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, John Williams is, well, he's not dead, so he's not rolling in his grave, but he's definitely upset right now. Um, I'm going to click over here. So I, I captured this. And now on the bottom over here on the right, it says convert to instrument. I could continue and then edit with my voice, but I want to actually show you how cool this is. As much as you'd love to hear that again, and, and just to you know, remind you what it sounded like, I'm going to take the little player over here and click play. Oh, oh, that's, that's the, so you're, you're kind of getting what I wanted to show you. The vocal was, <laughs> to remind you about that ba -bum, part. Ba -bum, ba -bum, yeah, we, we remember, right? So, <laughs> yeah, thank you. I love when it comes back loud and you're like, yeah, it really is that bad. So um, what I've done over here is go over to instrument on the right. It's the default when you click on change to instrument. And I'm going to change the instrument over here. So we could do grand piano. That's cool. But, but Star Wars is kind of like, you know, a big thing. Let, let's do guitar. Oops. And let's do lead guitar big. And let's, uh, let's see what that sounds like. So... It's really simple to change it into any instrument you want, but here's where it gets cool. You saw that that took 30 seconds, right? You could start adding tracks to this to have an entire band and do it collaboratively. So I can create the bass, and then working in groups, I'm going to do the vocals, and then someone else can come in and do a different instrument, and we can create a song that we could use either as a standalone project, which is fantastic for any subject if you could think about it. And yes, if you're saying, well, I've never seen a math song, you know, the AP calculus videos, have you guys seen, like I know, I know this is uh, elementary school, but if you search online on YouTube for AP music videos, you will see some of the most ridiculous, nerdy kids just jamming out to like Kesha songs about calculus, you know, I, seriously. So, but what I like about this is even better. So I am clearly not, you know, the singer and I'm off pitch. Here's something I love about this. I'm gonna click over here, double click on the little timeline. It brings up each of those notes. As I hover over them, you'll notice it tells me this was the best. Perhaps this tool is broken. Um, so it says over here, as I drag this around, that's good, rare, best. I could tweak exactly what it sounded like and make it better. So if there was something that was off pitch that says best, I'm going to see if I could find like one that, that we could fix. This thing thinks I was great. I don't know. It's very kind. Go to best. So you can see I can tweak this. I'm gonna, for, for just for fun, I'm going to tweak it off. I'm going to just make these very strange so you can see that this really does have a quick impact. Um, click over here, press play. <laughs> better or worse. You know, I feel like I'm at the optometrist. Better or worse. Better or worse. Okay, so now, yeah, yeah, A or B. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Um, so so what, I, what, what I love to stress about this tool is the save and share factor, okay? So I can save this and share it. I could share it to other social networks, but I could also download the MP3. That's what, you know, what we lose sight of, I think, a lot of times is this is completely web-based. So I could log into this from any machine, anywhere, and work on a song. So you could start a project and, you know, like I remember, uh, I'll caveat this by saying, I remember when Movie Maker and iMovie were the only choices for video editing, and you were locked into that machine in that lab, and if, you know, it was impossible, and video projects take a while. Same with audio projects, if the kids are passionate about it. And you know when you show this to your kids, they're not going to want to do it for 30 seconds. They're going to want to do it for hours. You can give them five minutes to start the base, give them maybe the, you know, this is what I'd like you to do, and you can create anything you want. And then at home, they could log in, or on their devices, they could log in and access the content and add to it continuously. So it's a really great platform for creating music. Um, it does have a general music editor, so just like um, GarageBand, it has instruments where I can just click on the instrument and just drag notes in. But this, I think, is an even faster way for students to just quickly uh, take this and, and go with it. The one thing I would say is that if you don't want to waste time, if, you, if, if you're working on a project and you feel that the creation of the music is not the, the uh, most important part, but you'd rather have them write lyrics for something, you can hum out a little tune or you can go to one of the preset tunes that they have and share that as the base. So really allowing them to create something unique and exciting with, uh, with as much time or as much constraint as you'd like for the project. Very cool. Great. So, I, oh, thank you. Uh, so, thank you. So we see that you all have stuff with you. It's a, a bring your own device 
uh, session. So what we thought we'd like to do with the last few minutes is allow first any questions that you might have for the group, and then I think we'd like to do a little lab where you can start playing with these tools, and we'll come around and circulate, and ask, you can ask us questions, we can share things with each other, and use the Today's Meet, of course, to kind of keep conversations going about ideas you've had maybe about using these tools, or questions you have for us. So I guess general questions for any of us. Do students need to create accounts for you, Jim? Yeah, I believe at the moment you need to create a uh, email. You can do the teacher thing that I always used to do is like, you know, teacher at gmail.com and give them the one password because that's great for collaboration purposes. It does have a Facebook login, but they recently have added, thankfully, a, a Gmail login as well, a re regular email login as well. Um, but I know that they're working on a student portal to this. They've recently just expanded to an app which lets you do video editing on their iPhone. Um, it's okay. But, but this is really what I think is like their, their strongest product. So yeah, the, the long answer of that is at the moment, yes, they do. Questions for any of us? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're standing up. We can't see you. Yeah, yeah, the lights are in our eyes. Sorry. Cool. Well, all right. So let's do this. Let's, let's play. Let's get our hands dirty and, and start playing with some of this stuff. And we'll walk around and give you guys any assistance you might need. Or you can show off the awesome products you have. If you're a really good singer, why not? <laughs> 